are about to see an incredible human document. An encounter with forces that no one on this earth really understands. You may find it shocking, impossible. But it is nevertheless evidence of a universe beyond the power of our five senses. for bathroom water. Carefoot. That's a great way to catch cold. What do you think I am, 90 years old or something? <laughs> Silly you're, man. You're an annoying female. Singularly unfitted for childbearing. Darling, I was kidding. This time it'll be all right, honest Johnny. I know. I know. Can I have some coffee? I don't want you to think that the minute your back is turned, I'd do anything the doctor says I shouldn't. The doctor said get plenty of sleep. It's after 12. A darn plane woke me up. What plane? You must have heard it. Heard what? The motor started sputtering like it was having trouble. It was flying very low and very loud. Well, I guess it wasn't as loud as our old clunkers getting. Now I think the fan belt's gone. <laughs> what next? You look exhausted. Holding down two jobs, working until midnight. You see what marriage has done for you, young man? See what it's done to you. I was so frightened when I woke up. And what? Plane. But then the sound went away. I guess everything's all right. No. Everything is not all right. There is a theory, not yet proven, that when a woman is carrying a child, the five senses she uses in everyday living become infinitely more acute. But what about the sixth sense? That sense we barely acknowledge, and then with a skeptical smile. What happens with the sixth sense? he was gonna hit the house. The same time of last night, exactly. Isn't that strange? You must have heard it tonight. Yeah, come on, little dreamer. Back to sleep. Hmm? You're going deaf, do you know that? Mm -hmm. Was the radio playing or something? Yeah. He just zoomed right down. At the same time. Some idiot up there with his split-second schedule of scaring the neighborhood. I heard it. Did I say no? But you didn't. You really didn't.
I heard it hit the roof. I saw the, the plaster break. What's happening to me? What's happening to you is that you're going to have a baby. I mean, if you behave yourself, get plenty of sleep, and don't become a neurotic woman, you will have a baby. This is no time for one of my bedside manners. If you start acting silly, even at this late date, you can still have trouble. You've got a pretty good history of trouble in that department. Come on. Lay off her. But I heard the plane. Every time it was closer. What do you want me to say, that, that I didn't hear it? All right, so you heard it. But since there is no plane, you heard it here. But why? What difference does it make why? Why do most pregnant women develop their peculiar and ridiculous food wants? It's part of the pattern of sensitivity. Oh, why couldn't you have been nice and normal and, and merely need pickled pig's knuckles and strawberry sherbet or something? Would you lay off a doc? Her blood pressure was nowhere near as good as it was last week. Her pulse is going a mile a minute. Now, if you want yourself a nice, friendly old doc, you go someplace else. After six years of the trouble we've had, I want to be able to come out of that delivery room next month and say, okay, Papa, buy the cigars. Now, now first, let's, let's deal with the plane. I want you to be absolutely convinced that it was your imagination and therefore meaningless. I am convinced. No, not really. But, Doctor, I saw the empty sky. All right. Let's say the plane could have climbed behind a cloud. Who knows? Maybe like you say, there is some maniac flying around up there, buzzing houses. But if we can prove to you, without a doubt, beyond question, that there is no plane, then will you stop all this? Sure. Settle for being goofy. Oh, not goofy. Pregnant or... Dreaming. I was not dreaming. Yes. Yes, I'll stop it. If you prove it to me. Laura, this is silly. It's the sixth time I've showed you that clock. Now, will you please go back to sleep? It's not going to happen. I feel like a dope making you miss a night's work and everything. All that pay and all our bills. How do you stand me? Yeah, open. Two of them. Doctor said you'd be in dreamland five minutes later. I just felt certain that it was some kind of warning. Every night, exactly at 12.17. Each time closer. Open. How do you stand me? Should have taken them half an hour ago. Your boss is going to raise Cain. I really do give you a bad time. Wish there was somewhere I could say I'm sorry. Me too. How long has it been since we've danced, Stephen? <laughs> you can't fuck Mother Nature. You can try. Oh, you're too fat. Yeah, Joe you. Haley. The midnight comet with news and everything till dawn. The time of the chime is 12.15. You changed the clock. I didn't. Don't lie to me. You tricked me. You moved it up almost an hour. Sleep in five minutes. Oh, sure. Sleep when it happens. Sleep huh? when it doesn't happen. I don't believe anything you say. Oh, look, suppose someone is buzzing the neighborhood. Why should he scare you again? I'm going to find out. I don't believe you. Frightening your life. No, it's starting. Look. Hi. What happened? Nothing. 
nothing much. And what's she doing here? You fainted. You know Doc Moroni. Always play it safe. I remember now. Johnny, I remember. Now, come on. I saw the plane. I saw the wing come crashing through the ceiling. It was green with white numbers on the wing. M5227K. How long have I been sleeping? A long time. Hours? What time is it? Oh, Johnny, you've got to do something. Uh, Laura, come on. Oh, don't you understand? Tonight is the night. Tonight it crashes through. Tonight it kills us. What's she going to do? It's doctor's orders. No! No, honey, it's for the baby's sake. He said you've got to sleep at least 24 hours straight through. But if she gives me that, I'll never wake up again tonight. The plane kills us. Will you hold her, please? Oh, please, 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 please. At 12.17, the plane crashes through and it's killing us. Now, Laura, please stop it. Every night, every night it came closer and closer. Why else do you think I was able to see the numbers so clearly on the wing? Oh, Johnny, can't you see? It's a warning. Mr. Perkins, the you... doctor insists. Oh, shut up, over you. Let me think. Please, just, just wait a minute. You know what the doctor said. If this keeps up, if you don't calm down, you might just lose the baby. Now, now what are you? A, a, a gypsy or something? Some, some, I don't know what, with a Ouija board? Look, darling, you're a bright, level-headed girl. You know things like this don't happen. But it did happen. Why? It's a warning. Oh, boy, oh, boy. All right, you saw the number on the plane. It's just as clear as day. In 5227K. Well, those numbers are like license plates on a car. If I check and find there's no plane like that with, with a number on it, would you be a good girl and take the hypo and go back to sleep? Yes, if, if you'll be honest about it and don't lie, like with the clock. I don't, don't know what I'm going to say or who I'm going to call. Isn't there a government bureau? Well, it's almost nine. It's all closed. Go to the airport. Which airport? There must be half a dozen around the city. Call them all! Say what? You know how ridiculous this is? Oh, Johnny, I'm sorry. But you don't have to tell them anything. Just, just find out if they have a plane with that number on it. Plane registered under that number at the West Valley Airfield. You see? West Valley? That's only a couple of miles from me. I know. Johnny, it's nearly 930. You're gonna have to hurry. All right. All right. Can I help? Oh, are you Mr. Blake? That's right. Uh, they told me that was your plane. As long as I can make the payments. I hear you rent it out to people. Oh, not another one. You're about the fifth one this week. I'm gonna hang around it day after day. Everything is in tip-top shape. And I'm ready to go. And nobody's interested. The minute she gets out of commission, everybody and her brother wants to fly her. Then... it is out of commission, huh? Can't you tell? Those are her carburetors. Uh, 
Well, look, uh, if you want this for something special or uh, just for fun, I mean, uh, if you can't wait, uh, it would be smart, too. See, since I cracked up in 51, I'm the original careful kid. I'm the guy who wears a belt and a pair of suspenders. Most everybody else has an engine overhaul every hundred flying hours. Me, every 75. Nothing like hitting a mountain or losing a leg to make a guy get cautious. When will it be flying again? I thought maybe tonight, but uh, no such luck. I just left a note from the mechanic giving him the bad news. Something very fishy about that crankshaft. How, how long will that take to fix up? Oh, a few days. Hey, uh, if I told you something, would you think I was crazy? Depends on what you told me. And we live only a couple of miles from here, and every night for the last four nights, my wife has dreamed about this plane. And every night it gets closer to crashing into the house, and tonight she's absolutely certain it is going to crash. Oh, she, she's even dreamed about the numbers on the wing. Well, she's... Uh, she's pregnant. Uh, you know how it is. It, well, look, uh, mister, if that baby is a boy, why, you just bring him around here and we'll give him a free airplane ride, huh? Tell my wife there's nothing to worry about tonight. Ain't, ain't women spooky, though? I've been through three of them already. I never got used to them. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Huh? Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Take a little snooze, boss. Oh, boy, I wore myself out. What happened? Oh, right here, look. Take a look at these. And they ain't counterfeit either, I checked. What are you talking about? Where's the plane? Well, if this guy's doing what he said he was going to do, it's circling around over his street right about now, flickering its lights on and off and wiggling its wings. What are you, what are you talking about? What's wrong? What did you do? Look, boss, about an hour ago, an old fella come by here wanting to rent the plane, and he offered me a hundred bucks. It was his 30th wedding anniversary, and he wanted to fly over the house, you know, for a gag. And a hundred bucks he offers me. Man, I, I mean, I worked my tail off finishing that overhaul so we wouldn't lose the dough, and, and you, you act like I was... What about the crankshaft? Huh? Ha! I left a note for you on the work table. I told you not to... Boss, look. I, I didn't see any notes. Well, look, you get over to that communications shack. And you have them contact this guy on the Unicom and tell him to land right now. Okay. Now, wait, wait, wait. This field at night with all those hills and wires is bad enough even when everything is okay. Must be a, must be a better field where things aren't so rough. Well, yeah, where? There, there, there's Lake City and Marblehead, Porter Field. Lake City is... It's not too bad. Not too bad. It's a beauty. No hills, nothing. All right, have them land at Lake City, but move! Okay. Wait. There's a young fella here before. Well, so? You weren't here. He had some, some story. He said his wife saw the plane... Uh, look, uh, look. Boss, look, I... look if, if, if any, any trouble develops on that plane, 
You have this anniversary joker use the chute. Bail out. Boss, will you tell There's me? There's an order direct from me. Personally, the owner. Okay. Oh, and uh, radio the field at Lake City and tell them what's wanting to expect them. Okay. Why didn't you get a room with a double bed? I told you four times already. They don't have one. <sighs> Happy? <clears throat> Relaxed. First time in three nights. Ten bucks for this crummy motel room. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'll pay you back out of the budget, okay? I'm chasing out of the house like crazy people. After I told you the plane couldn't possibly fly. <laughs> Good old twin beds. John. Oh. Huh. I'm sorry I'm such a dope. Uh -huh. But if we'd have stayed in our house tonight, I don't care what you said about the plane. When the clock says 12.17, I... We'd have all have died. I'd have died. The motor was hanging all over the floor. Come on, kiss me goodnight. I'm half asleep already. Uh -huh. All to do is break your neck. be that you can't change fate. But if you know it's coming, you can duck. Also, you might say that if John and Laura had stayed in this house, they'd have been safe. But their fate was to be in that motel room, driven there step by step exactly as we have dramatized. Also, happily, their fate was to get out of that room in time. Then why Laura's vision of things to come? Who knows? Perhaps to save the life of someone that John and Laura, and you, our audience, never knew. The pilot of the plane. Because he did bail out in time, as ordered. In any event, who in the world are we to even try to understand fate? Let alone expect it to create logical little patterns. All we can say is that what you have seen did happen. Jane Anna Pritchard of 5512 Riverton Avenue, North Hollywood, California, did indeed see and hear a falling plane day after day before it actually fell and tried to prevent its falling. Tried and failed. To be skeptical of the sixth sense is perhaps wise, but to ignore it could be very dangerous. <laughs>